What if you could develop feature-rich VR and MR applications with Android today? What if I were to tell you the pass-through camera access, object detection, Llama AI, interaction SDK, new UI components, and many more features are now available with a special SDK? Well, stick around and watch until the end because in today's video, we have a lot to cover. All right, guys, so let's take a look at some of the demos, starting with the Meta Special Scanner Showcase, which basically allows you to use camera access. In this case, I took a picture of the controllers and it gave me more context. Let's go ahead and look at the weights in here. So I have dumbbells, and you can see how it recognizes the dumbbells as well. I'm gonna try it again, but in this case, we're gonna be using the projector that I have here in this room. And it's really cool, it works really well. There are some items that it cannot recognize, but this is a great idea. And I would say a great starting point for pass-through and also the usage of Llama. In this case, I'm gonna go into my office, take an image of my monitor. And this was really cool because it detected the actual brand, which is LG, and also gave me a lot more information about it. This sample here is really cool because it allows you to basically get a variety of different UI components that you can integrate into your own experiences. You can see here that I can press the actual checkboxes, the drop downs. There is a really huge variety. This one actually snaps to your finger, which is really cool. The sliders are great. And then I can also change the theme, right? If I wanted to use a white theme, I can use that. They also have additional themes that you can also integrate. Just make sure that you hit a like below if you like what you're seeing. And then just, you know, a variety of different UI components that you can use as a reference. This is really cool. And this is a demo that when I look at it on GitHub, it didn't really have much information other than an image. So I wanted to just test it out and show you how cool it is because if you're building experiences that require immersive videos or videos that you can, you know, you can get, I think there's some videos that require copyright. So this example shows you how to load those. I think it's called DRM protected videos. So there's three different examples in here that you can look at. This one is also available in GitHub. And this is more of an immerse experience that shows you, you know, the fishes underwater, the different corals, and it's actually a beautiful experience that I really enjoy testing out. So next we have a hybrid sample. And this one is cool because you can build to the experiences that live in the, basically in your home area. And then if you wanna go and resize it, you can do that. Basically it gives you the functionality to build an application in 2D and it has all the goodies that a 2D application provides. I can also, if I wanted to use the immersive experience, I can click on it and it's gonna show you how the application would look like when it's in fully VR mode. All right, guys, so we're gonna start by downloading Android Studio from developer.android.com. Then let's go ahead and also download the Meta Special Editor. In my case, I'm gonna be using the Windows version. Also, either download the zip or clone the repo for the Meta Special SDK samples, which we're going to be using a lot today. Then let's go ahead and install Android Studio. So just go through the prompts and just choose the default installation. Click on a start to open it up. And then we're also going to be getting some of the additional components required by Android. Now we can install the Meta Special Editor and it's pretty easy. Just go ahead and hit next and then finish and then it should be good to go. Now, if you go under Android Studio and open it up, you're going to be installing the Meta Horizon plugin, which we're going to be using to create a project today. All right, guys, so next we're gonna be basically setting up some of the components in here, specifically ISDK. So you need to make sure that you can compile. This is the sample that I created by using Android Studio. So just make sure that you have that up and running. Then these are some of the folders that are available. So you can look at some of the activities that they provide as part of the samples. This shows you how to create a panel activity that has a variety of links. And when you click on one of those links, it's going to basically play a video on YouTube. Also, the UI sample here shows you the XML of where it's going to be playing the video. And if you wanted to basically add ISDK, which is a little bit different to what you use or what you do in Unity, is you have to add a line in here for that implementation. So let me show you here if we look at some of the different libraries that Gradle pull. The ISDK one is not listed, and we're going to fix that by just basically adding 
a new line and then just saying ISDK. So if you do this and you compile, it's not going to bring it down. It's not going to bring that library down. And this is something that I learned the hard way by testing this over and over and over. So if you click on the synchronize Gradle here, the Gradle changes, it's going to basically pull everything down and it's going to synchronize that file that we just updated. And now we should see here that we have the ISDK library. And now that we have it, we're going to start importing some of the functionality. So in this case, I'm going to say com.meta special ISDK. And we need to tell the system that we're going to be using a feature. So ISDK feature is the one that we need. Then to be able to use a feature, you need to add it to the list of features, just like I'm doing right now. Just say ISDK feature, pass in the context, pass in the, basically the singletons that we have in here, a special system manager, and also the build config. So now what I'm going to do is if you go ahead and right click on this file and go into open in associated application, you're going to see here that we don't have the components and I haven't shown you this, what this is yet, but this should allow me to add ISDK components to this panel. So to fix that, we're going to basically clean the project. If you clean the project, it's going to clean the build directory and then we can just go ahead and rebuild. You can see now that we have the build directory. And the components that I'm looking for are going to be these ones right here under the ISDK package. And now if you look at it, the XMLs that were on that folder got loaded on the Meta Special Editor. And now I can add those components to the panel. This is so that I can move these panels around by using hands or controllers. There's a really cool overlay that also gets put in around the panel so that you can move it around. And now let's go ahead and quickly add different 3D models that we're going to be interacting with. You can add anything you like. This is just going to be an example of how I had it set up. So now let's go ahead and build it and then deploy it to my physical device. So you can see now the experience here. I can interact by using hands and the system works really well. This one has a collider that I ended up adding. There's also ISDK collider components that you can add. I can also interact with the actual UI sample that was part of the template. And then also this other panel, which I show you as well in the code. And if I wanted to change the controllers, it's as easy as just picking them up and the system is going to recognize them. And now we can use the controllers. To register the panel, just look at the examples here that I have on this class. And if you go all the way down, you can copy an existing one and then just change the layout that we're going to be using. I clone that UI example layout and I rename it to UI gallery. So this is the one that we're going to be loading. So now you can see that we can interact with this. Hands don't go through the actual scroll view, which is really cool. And that is some of the features that I really like. It's very responsive and things work really well. Very, very snappy. I can also move it around. I can go ahead and do a direct touch and then also move the panel. So now I want to show you another option of the Android Studio plugin, which is called the Data Model Inspector. So if you guys are Unity developers or Godot or Unreal, there's always going to be either properties or inspector options that you want to you know, query or get information from. So this system is going to allow you to do that and change some of the properties on your entities, on the components that you have in real time. So, but before we need to set something up, so just make sure that you follow the steps in here to load the components required. It's going to require that you close Android Studio and reload it. Once you do that, you can hit play and you're going to see that on the right side, we have the inspector. And then on the left side, I have the Meta Developer Hub, which is currently casting to my physical device. And I did that so that we could actually see the changes. And this has basically emulation controls that are going to allow you to basically emulate the headset by going in and using your keyboard, your mouse. I can also make changes on the data model inspector in real time and, and the changes you can see right away. So this is really cool when it comes to testing. So I can move this panel around after I resize it. And I can also see the changes in here if I wanted to you know, do it as I'm wearing the device. Basically, I'm using hand tracking and then moving this object. And another cool thing is you can see there's a red overlay on each object. That means that that entity is being selected and it is reflected on the data model inspector. 
It's crazy how far we are now with this Android development path. Personally, I love what was released with this big update, and this will now allow me to choose if using a game engine is really the right choice going forward, or at least that question will come to mind as I work on future projects. I'm curious, what are your thoughts here? Are you using a special SDK already? Would you consider using it if you were an Android developer or maybe you are an Android developer? Let me know in the comments below, hit subscribe, and thank you everyone and happy XR coding.